Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. Discerning Hearts, in cooperation with the Poor Clare Nuns of the Monastery of Our Lady of Guadalupe and Cluny Media, presents excerpts from Come, Lord Jesus, Meditations on the Art of Waiting, written by Mother Mary Francis. In this episode, Mother Mary Francis reflects on the epicenter. In today's gospel, we have our dear Lord's shivering words about the house built on sand, which looked so good standing there. Everything was going along all right, but then some winds came, and then some rain came, and that good-looking house fell because it was built on sand. Jesus says in those terrible words, which always cause a shiver to go down the spine, the rains came and the winds came, and that house fell. And oh, what a fall it had. We have falls in our lives, in our spiritual lives, and sometimes they are very bad. The trouble is that we had built something on sand. And then, of course, our dear Lord talks about the other house. It also looked good. It was good because it was built on a rock. He says that the winds came and they beat against that house. If these were sentient houses, we couldn't claim that this house didn't feel the wind and the other one did. No, it felt the winds. The winds and rain beat upon this house too, and it also suffered. It also had to endure the impact of the untoward. But this house stood firm because it was built upon a rock. I remember that when we were beginning the building of the monastery at one of our daughter houses, The soil boring studies held up the digging of the foundation for months because the dangers related to soil substance. We were not able to go forward, dig the foundation, put up the building without really knowing what was under it. While we chafed a bit, wanting them to start at the digging, we did recognize the extreme importance of knowing this. Because of this problem of soil substance, We have the foundation of this house measured off into sections. When I made a visitation there, I could see this. There were extra wide seams in the floors. In the naked concrete, you could see it very well. They took precautions in the building. First, they didn't build on sand. And then they took precautions so that if, despite their best efforts, something happened, it wasn't going to wreck the whole place. If part of the soil gave way three-eighths of an inch, the building was not going to tilt because extra work had been done. Another image that comes to mind is the recent earthquake in California. At the time, we heard a great deal about the epicenter, where the tremor of the earthquake is usually the most violent and the land in most danger. Each of us needs to ask this Advent, what is my epicenter? What is my greatest danger point? Where do I have to take most precautions? In the earthquake in California, we heard about this fault running through the earth, 12 miles beneath the surface. At times, the weakest point in our spiritual lives is more than 12 miles down. We want to see what this is. We want, without putting ourselves under a microscope, to take better precautions so that God's house which is each of us, does not fall when the rains beat against it or the winds beat against it or the earthquake comes. We need to ask, what caused this? If I lapse into sodden moodiness or indulge miasmic sensitiveness, is there perhaps a resentment or self-pity I have never resolved 12 miles beneath that epicenter? If I quake, with anger over something that even I myself can see later on is really such a small thing. What is 12 miles below that epicenter? Where is the real trouble? The real trouble would be that I have not exercised self-control in little things. I have not been faithful to little disciplines that all our customs call for. In the area of holy poverty, 
Am I shaken with seismic rumblings if I want something and it is not there? I want this. I want that. I want it right away. Twelve miles below this reaction is the fault of never having penetrated the meaning of my vow to be without anything of my own. That is where the real trouble is. Why am I so upset if somebody seems to usurp my little place or my little things? We wonder why people build over the fault where the danger is greatest. But surely our dear Lord could say to us, How can you think you are building on rock when you have never taken care of that fault, which is 12 miles down? Why are you so foolish? Then the comparison ends, because this geological mystery cannot be remedied by man. But we can bring the plates together. We can mend the fault, that deep down thing 12 miles below the surface of this occasion, the situation in which I gave such a bad performance And this is wonderful. I really can bring meaning and practice together so that the earthquake does not happen again. I do not despond. I do not wed myself to this mood. I do not sit down in self-pity. I do not erupt into anger. I can do what the scientists can't do, what all the geologists in the world can't do. But I have the grace to do it, and I can do it. This is an intriguing subject. I ask you to explore it very deeply in prayer. Let us look, each one of us, at our own epicenter. When something unexpected comes up and when something seems to build up and there is this wreckage, then I have to see what is really 12 miles below it. And I have to see this, not in pessimistic dismay, but in what I would dare to call an affirmative dismay and say, yes, that's horrible, that is frightening, but I can do something about it. You've been listening to an excerpt from Come, Lord Jesus, Meditations on the Art of Waiting. For more episodes in this series, visit discerninghearts.com or you can find it inside the free Discerning Hearts app. To obtain a copy of the book, Come, Lord Jesus, visit cluneymedia.com. Discerning Hearts is a 501c3 nonprofit Catholic apostolate dedicated to evangelization and spiritual formation. To learn how you can support our mission, visit discerninghearts.com.